another minibus. Now we're going to Kampot. After enjoying the beautiful islands of Koh Rong and Koh Rong San Loam, we are heading to the final destination on our journey through Cambodia, the province of Kampot. Located in the southwest of the country, with a projected population of 720,000 people for 2023, Kampot province consists of eight districts divided into 92 communities with a total of 477 villages and has abundant natural resources. In the 19th century, during the French Indochina period, Kampot became a regional administrative center with the status of a state border district as a result of the elimination of the Kingdom of Cambodia. Krong Kampot is the capital of Kampot province and unlike most Cambodian provincial capitals, its center is composed of 19th century French colonial architecture. The region and town are famous for its high quality pepper, which is exported worldwide, as well as Kampot fish sauce and of course durian, which is the symbol of the province. Under French rule, it was Cambodia's most important seaport after the loss of the Mekong Delta and before establishment of Sinekville. <laughs> it's something sweet, right? But we don't know what it is, so let's find out. Well, it's warm and it smells very good. It's from the, you know, the X White. They make something to make the color, but this is from X White. You see inside the white, yeah? And there'll be some flavor there. Mm. Well, you know, if it's a sweet, you can't go wrong. The next day we got up early in the morning and after thoroughly inspecting our rented scooter we made our way to the Bokor National Park. Established in 1993 and covers 1544 square kilometers, Bokor National Park is a must-visit destination in the province. Situated in the Damre Mountains, just one hour away from the city center, it was designated as an ASEAN Heritage Park in 2003. It now stands as one of the only two ASEAN Heritage Parks in the country. Most of the park is about 1000 meters above the sea level and the highest peak is Phnom Bokor, stands at 1081 meters. The Damre Mountains was formerly a Khmer Rouge controlled area, but in 1993 Preem Monibong National Park was inaugurated along with most other national parks in Cambodia. The park is named after King Sisabat Monibong, who used to visit the area and ordered the construction of a Buddhist temple here in 1924. In 2019, the government released a master plan for Pokor City Development Project, which is aimed to be completed by 2035, by which 19,000 hectares of the park are to be developed for residents, tourism and businesses. Hello everyone and welcome to Bokor National Park, which is just right outside of the city. Ideally you can rent a motorbike and um, come here either in the morning or later during the day. Bear in mind you're probably going to experience similar weather as today. We see pretty cloudy and misty, not much of a view. Now if you come up here, uh, remember to probably wear a long sleeve as it's quite chilly. And we are right now 1048 meters above sea level. And behind me you can see Lok Ye Mao Monument, which is an enormous 29 meters high monument. Legend says Lok Ye Mao was the protector of the mountains as well as the coastal area in Cambodia. It was a really pleasant drive up here. It's so misty, you can't see anything. Uh, there's a lot of people here, but yeah, there's no view, unfortunately. The history of Lok Ye Mao is shrouded in legends and stories. According to one story that is said sometime before the French colonial era, she was a beautiful lady married to a powerful warrior. 
When he died, she took control of the armies against the Thai and became a celebrity. Another version says that Ye Mao was a wife of Ta Korom Ko. They lived in the forest near Pek Nil Mountain. One day on their walk, they came across a tiger. Ta Krom Ko abandoned his wife and the tiger devoured her. Let's go to Black Palace. Since then, any traveler who passes by the place of the accident paid respect to her spirit to avoid a similar fate. It's so lovely up here. It's uh, quite cool comparing to the intense heat at the bottom of the mountain. <laughs> But here, it's nice and fresh, so maybe you want to bring some warm clothes with you, just in case. And that mist makes it all spooky. And apparently this place is also home to hundreds of butterflies. I haven't seen any yet, but they're here somewhere. The long sleeve is needed, but it's perfect like this. Turning left. Yeah. Yeah. See. So the next stop is the Chinese temple. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. Taken out the Chinese temple, we went to take a look at the highest and one of the most sacred spiritual Buddhist places in Cambodia, Wat Sampov Pram Monastery. This Buddhist temple was established by His Majesty King Monivong in 1920s. The name generally means the Temple of Five Bones. This correlates with the appearance of five large and flat rock formations located inside the temple, whose shape convey the images of five sailing boats. The locals often link the origin of Bap Sampong Pram with the myth of Prea Tong in Ning Nik. The story begins with Prince Prea Tong, who doesn't have the support of his father king. The king favors his brother and forces Prea Tong to leave everything to him. Look at this beautiful big Buddha here. As a response to the unfair decision of his father, Prea Tong chose to leave his country and go traveling around the world. One day, when walking on the beach, he saw a couple of girls playing. He instantly fell in love with the beauty of Aquarium Princess Nagani. They fell in love and Prea Tong asked her father permission to marry her. The Dragon King agreed with his daughter's choice and let them get married. Since Prea Tong wanted to leave the ocean and build his own kingdom, the king wished them luck and gave them five giant boats filled with jewelry and servants. 
the boats finally landed at the location of Wat Sampo Pram. Preaton considered this location as his destiny and decided to establish his own kingdom here. Well, on a beautiful clear day, I bet you can see so far out. But today, as you can see, there's no chance. It's so misty. We just stopped at the random roundabout because it's a lovely pagoda here. Look at this. Ah, oh, there's really cool decorations here all over the place, on the ceiling, on the walls. It's like really detailed carving. Wow. Really nice pagoda. And it's like in the middle of nowhere. There's nothing around here. It's just some kind of a random roundabout with a gas station. And there you go. And you got this place. Incredible. The best time to visit Bokor National Park is between December and March, when temperatures are at the most comfortable. Despite the warm climate, it is important to remember that the main part of the national park is situated over 1,000 meters above the sea level, and therefore the temperature at the top is naturally lower. So pack warm and waterproof jacket, as it can get chilly at the top. So we didn't get a nice view from the top of the mountain, so we stopped on the way down. There's a little, uh, a little viewpoint, and uh, well, it's better than nothing, right? Yeah. Multiple tour companies will take you to the national park, but if you have a license, renting a scooter is the best way to explore it. The road is well paved and smooth, meaning you don't have to be a pro to ride it. Another huge advantage of making your own way to the park is that you can take your time to explore it, as well as keep the cost down. There is no entrance fee, so it's a cost-friendly activity for backpackers. We opted out for a dinner at the Riki Tiki Davi. I'm gonna try a Campo Pepper burger. And I'm going to try a Swiss mushroom burger. Cheers for that. Cheers. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. We are paddling around in the Green Cathedral. It's roughly an hour if you don't stop. Obviously, if you take it slower, taking pictures and videos, it'll be a bit longer. A perfect escape from the hustle and bustle of the town, the Green Cathedral is only a 15-minute scooter ride away, heading north out of the town. You can rent kayaks from numerous guest houses that line the waterway and we rented ours at the Retro Campot guest house. The host was very nice and offered us cold drinks and fruit on arrival. The Green Cathedral is named for the green foliage that lines the waterway, where the plants have grown to touch leaves across the water, forming a canopy providing a cover from the blazing sun. a bottle of water, a dry bag for spare clothes and cameras, and before setting off, make sure to put on sunblock and bug spray. If you are planning to fly a drone, be careful, as birds will attack it. While it's a loop, in some places it can get confusing, so Google Maps provides good reference points and confidence that you are going the right way. There is plenty to see for wildlife enthusiasts, as you will see plenty of dragonflies, insects and birds.
after a relaxing kayak trip, we jumped on the scooter and made our way to the La Plantation. La Plantation was kickstarted in 2013 by a French-Belgian couple who, after a long career in IT, decided to move to Cambodia and start a compote pepper farm on a wasteland. We made it to the secret lake. Well, that's, that's how they call this lake here. I'm not sure of the exact name, but it's a secret lake. Well, looks quite nice. Well, I'm not gonna take risks swimming in that lake. God knows what kind of creatures are in there. Although a swim would be just right in this heat. So we arrived at La Plantation. This is a pepper farm. And uh, I'm not sure if we're gonna get a guide, but so far we're just gonna go and explore on our own and see what we can find here. Kampot province is very famous for its pepper. So we're waiting for a tour which will start in about 40 minutes. So we're just gonna get a cold drink, relax a little bit. It was a bumpy road. Luckily our scooter brought us here in one piece. Pepper has been cultivated in the region since the 13th century and its traditional cultivation methods benefits from ancestral expertise. I'm a plantation, we just uh, started our project on 2013 until now 2023, so it's 10 years already. So 10 years anniversary. And if you take a look over there, that big tree, that's the fruit that represent Kampot province, it's durian. Inside, they have many trays inside them, layers. So what we put in there, like pepper, black and white, and some spices as well, like red chili, bird chili, long chili, and different type of spices as well, you can check out uh, uh, at our shop. Khmers, who still heal themselves with traditional and natural remedies, have an extensive knowledge of local plants and their benefits, which they use every day. This is the picture, the first when we start our project. Before we start to plant the pepper, we have to fix the ground first. So our four type of our color what that we have at the shop that we have green, black, white and red. Everything is coming by the same vine here. The more they are green and a bit uh, dark green, they have very high spicy flavor inside them. But when they change to red by the sun hitting them, their spicy flavor will be dropping down, sweetness will be going up. Right now we have 23,000 poles of peppercorns, but we only have 1,000 poles of the long pepper. So this peppercorn is well, a bit different because they are slow growing. To wait them grow 1.5 to 2 meters, they need 2 years. And also to wait them to grow from the ground to the first top 4 meters. Sometimes we, uh, we wait uh, 3 years, but another farm more than 3 years. And also about them, the first 3 years of them, we don't harvest them. The reason why? Because they are slow growing. Especially don't, they don't have high spicy flavor inside them. And third, we want them to grow a happy life to give us a lot of plenty of food in the future. So the first three years, starting from June to July, they become flowering. So this is their young flower, it's making like this. So we're gonna keep cut their flowers. We do it again and again, jump to the third year. So when we cut their flowers, it means we're giving them energy to grow faster. So jump to the third year, we stop cutting their flower, we're gonna be leave it there, and then we can be harvest them on the fourth year. La Plantation highlights the traditional cultivation of compote pepper and Cambodian spices by offering activities around the farm where visitors can learn and discover what it takes to produce the world's finest pepper. After a long day, we got peckish and decided to head over to Kep Crab Market to taste the famous fresh Kep Crab and we were ready to ride 20 kilometers to try it. So we made it to Cap Crab Market and we can't wait to try some crab. I'm not sure if we're uh, on time or if it's too late now for it, but we're gonna try our luck. This unique market is located in a small seaside village in the town of Cap. It's a hectic place that feels very authentic, where trade is a form of art. This is where you can get some of the freshest crab in the world. The industry plays a vital role in helping the locals in Cap earn their living by fishing, selling and serving this kind of seafood to visitors. The market has long-standing history as locals have been doing business here for decades. The 
combination of fresh compote pepper and fresh cap crab is a match made in heaven. You must try if you are in this region. Okay, compote crab. Wow, so we just tried cap crab and it was delicious. In fact, it was probably one of the best crabs I've ever had. It's fresh, the sauce that they make with the compote pepper was so lovely. So if you come to the market here in Cap, you should definitely try the crab. You will not be disappointed. It's a messy affair, it's difficult to eat, but once you get the hang of it, it's worth it. Now I don't think I will go swim. I am going for sure. I need to cool down, okay. cool dip after this sweaty day. So yes, you should come with me. I think I'll wait till we get back to the hotel and I'll uh, have a swim in the pool instead. Yeah. Need to wash off the dirt of the road. So how was Cap? Yeah, Cap was alright. I think the highlight was the crab. Uh, we've not tried the beach at the end. Uh, decided just to head back to the hotel and have a dip in the pool instead. Yeah, we've got a long way back now, but it'll be fun. Our time in Cambodia has come to an end. We thoroughly enjoyed our time here, having seen some incredible places and made memories for life. Thank you, Cambodia. It was a blast. Next, we are crossing the border into Vietnam and begin a one-month journey through this beautiful country, starting in Phu and heading north to Hanoi.